Hey, what's up everyone? Today I'm going to show you an infinite butcher glitch which will allow you to grab a bunch of materials as well as a chance at acquiring legendary schematics. And on top of that, I'm also going to be showing you how to defeat any boss using a new glitch. We are going to be going over five brand new glitches in today's video. If you have frequently stopped by the channel and you're not subscribed yet, do that now and let's go ahead and talk about these glitches. Let's begin by discussing how to do the infinite butcher glitch. The only requirements is that you're going to need a butcher cleaver and you're also going to need a pal with a pal saddle. So make sure that you have crafted both of those. And to be correct, it's not butcher cleaver, it's the actual meat cleaver. So make sure that you have purchased that which can be obtained at level 12 in the technology tab. This glitch can be done somewhat early game as long as you're able to reach level 12 and obtain that item. Once you have obtained the meat cleaver, we can then craft a PAL saddle, which can be found over here at the PAL workbench. You can do this with any PAL, by the way, so if you're wondering or you're curious as to which one does work, all of them will work. And even if that is the case, I do want to say that when you are trying to do this glitch, it is best to use this with a alpha pal or one that is rare that will give you material, such as a schematic or the material of your choice. And with that information being said, how to do this glitch is quite simple. You are going to summon down your pal, choose the butcher option. When you hear the second butcher strike, you are going to then hop on top of your mount. What you will notice is that you will obtain some material and you will be able to keep the pal that you just butchered. And another thing that you will notice is that when you do hop on top of your pal, it's going to look kind of odd. So just hop off, then just rinse and repeat the glitch by dropping your pal and picking it back up. What this is going to achieve is that your pal is going to be normal and you're going to be able to summon it down once more we can then do the glitch once more when we hear that second strike hop on top of the mount i will say that you do have a slight delay there so that you do have time even after it's dead to hop on top of it so really it's not too picky on the timing you can actually do this easily if you just figure out the right moment towards the end. And I'll show another example right here. You can tell right at the end, I had a short delay so I can easily hop on top of my mount. I do not need to tap it down instantly, but you can definitely try that. The only issue is that there is a problem with that. And what exactly is the issue? If you take a look on the screen here, you can see when I butcher this chillet, it's going to then drop me down below because I hopped on top of the mount too soon. The main idea here is that you do not want to hit the mount button when you do see the second strike. What I like to do is try to mount when I do see the body flop down. So yeah, when you see the body knocked out, that's when I would suggest hopping on top of your mount. And absolutely do not try this out with a breeded pal. You can definitely do it, but you're not going to be able to obtain some of those schematics. Continuing on towards number two, we are going to discuss the boss glitch which will allow you to defeat any boss. The only requirements is that you're going to need a rocket launcher, missile ammo, or rocket ammo, and you're going to need a pal of your choice that is an ice type. The only way to acquire a rocket launcher is to reach level 49, purchase it from the technology tab, and make sure that you also have purchased the missiles. If you need any help on leveling up, I highly suggest checking out one of my previous videos and I'll show you how to acquire a bunch of XP. If for whatever reason you're experiencing some trouble finding that video, I can definitely link it down below in a pinned comment. Alrighty now, we have now obtained a rocket launcher. We now have a pal type with a ice attack. So we're pretty much good to go. The only thing that I suggest is that you do have the rocket launcher equipped so that it is in your hand. You do have the missile ammo, rocket ammo, and make sure that the rocket launcher has been reloaded so that you do have ammunition inside. The next step, we need to locate a boss on the map. I'm going to choose Anubis because I want to defeat him. I haven't done so, I can definitely do it now. Once you're here, you should see the boss right away. What you will want to do is hop on top of your ice mount and try to use the attack. For example, I will be using the top and bottom attack here so that I can freeze Anubis. Once Anubis has been frozen, shoot the rocket launcher at Anubis the pal will fly up in the air, and you should see the pal will begin to fall down. The pal will be knocked out, and at that point you can grab the material and continue on towards the next boss that you would like to take out. What I plan on doing here for the next three clips is to show some more proof 
also show you what it looks like when you do try to do this in a dungeon so that you kind of have an idea of what goes on. Also, if you try to do this with a frozen type, it's not going to work. That is the only thing that I would like to mention. So when you do try to do this, it's just, it's going to be a struggle. But you can definitely do this with water type, as you can tell right there. This tile has then been launched up in the air, and you should see on the left side that it's going to fall down, like so. So now, what happens if you try to do this in a dungeon? Will the boss fly up in the air? Will it die? The answer to that is yes. The boss will fly up in the air. Sometimes the boss will even shoot itself underneath. You might be thinking, well, how is it possible if you're inside of a dungeon? Uh, where is the boss going to fly? The thing about that is that the boss will end up shooting itself either underneath or on top of the dungeon. For example, right here, I'm going to freeze this PAL. Once frozen, shoot the rocket launcher at the PAL. The PAL will then begin to either go underneath or on top. What will most likely happen is that the PAL will survive and most likely will be underneath or out of bounds. Moving along towards number three. The only requirements here is that you will need a PAL that can rush towards another PAL or another merchant and push them off. For example, this PAL right here has a ability called Reckless Charge. This skill or ability can allow you to rush towards any PAL or any merchant and essentially push them off. This will also give them a ragdoll effect. Now that I have the PAL of my choice equipped, I want to locate Icy Weasel Hill that you just saw on the map. You want to follow this windy road path here and go all the way towards the end, towards Astral Mountains. You should see this guy right here at the end, which is the Black Marketeer. Also, if you did not watch a previous video, I had shown you something similar. Except this boss was on a cliff and we had to build something down below. This time, we do not need to do that. Just rush towards the Black Marketeer at an angle like so. This will push the Black Marketeer off. You'll see that the Black Marketeer has suffered some fall damage. What I do not recommend is that you use a glider like I have, which is a PAL. Do not use that PAL because you'll just be floating there midair, and this will give the Black Marketeer enough time to take you out. What you will notice though is that this Black Marketeer has not been defeated just yet. So I'll just fish him up with the rest of my skills and pick up the loot. If the loot falls down below, you can easily pick it up. There's not an issue there. Make sure that you do give your pal a chance to breathe here because we are going to fly somewhere else on the map. This is going to completely reset the Black Marketeer so that it respawns. We just want to fly towards the back snowy portion here. And once you have flown far enough, you can then fly back towards the spot that we just were at. You will see that the Black Marketeer has respawned. You can do this as much as you like so that you can obtain a lot of money and a lot of keys. I do want to say that your best option to obtain money is probably by duplicating nails and then selling that to a merchant. And as you can tell right here, the NPC has respawned. We can go ahead and use our ability once more, shoot him off, ragdoll him off the cliff. And if there's any health left, finish him off, and you can also, you know, potentially knock him all the way out if he does fall further. So with that one out of the way, we can move on towards number four. This next glitch is going to acquire a chillet or any mount. You're going to summon down your mount, and you're going to try to get on top of your mount while trying to send it back into the sphere. If you do it correctly, this should happen right here. It will launch you straight up in the air and you can continuously go up as far as you possibly can. Are there any benefits to doing this glitch? No, absolutely not, but it definitely looks cool and it was fun to try out. I might just do this in a dedicated server and just see what exactly happens. But as you can tell right here, I can use some of my abilities. What happens when I try to get off of my mount? What you will notice here in just a few seconds is that I'm going to be slingshot to one of my bases. This right here might be a useful glitch for you after all if you just need some way of slingshotting back to your base as I just mentioned. We are now going to continue on and talk about the last and final glitch. This next one involves creating a base over here at this flat landscape, which can be found over here towards the exact coordinates on the bottom. Once you're over here, you can then notice that if you create a base, your pals are not going to be attacked, your base is not going to be attacked, the whole entire place is going to be raid free. 
All of the enemies will spawn here, down below, and they'll try to attack the rock wall. And at that point, you can just continue building, doing whatever you need to do, because they will not be able to reach you at all. So with that being said, that was the final and fifth glitch. I hope you guys have enjoyed the videos. If you have, make sure that you are subscribed, turn those notifications on by clicking the bell icon down below, and make sure that you are notified for all. I appreciate the love and support from all of you that have just stopped by. Either it's a negative comment or it's a positive one. I appreciate it both ways. If you have any questions about today's video or a previous glitch video, ask down below and I will try to reply back. You can also join the Discord down below or follow me on Twitter. Thank you guys so much once again and I'll see you all in the next video.